Hi, it's Cisco with Acrobotic and I'm here to talk to you about how to get started with the ESP32. The ESP32 is the latest chip by the company that brought us the ESP8266. And I'll leave you a link in the description of the video so you can find out more about this new chip. But the most important differences that I see are that it has a second core for faster data processing. It also has a whole bunch of new input and outputs. And more importantly are 18 analog to digital channels and a couple of digital to analog ones. And also it has a couple of built-in sensors like a temperature sensor and a Hall effect sensor, all in this new chip. Of course, all that functionality comes at a price. So right now the ESP32 costs about twice as more as the ESP8266. I'll talk a little bit later about when to choose each one. For this tutorial, we're going to be using a development board for the ESP32. A couple of nice things about using a development board is that it has all the different components that you need for programming the chip. For example, this USB to serial adapter that translates the data coming in from the computer over USB to serial that is understood by the actual ESP32. It also has pins on each side that allows me to mount it on a solderless breadboard. So if I want to wire components to it, it makes that job a lot easier. So how do we go about using the development board? Well, the first thing is to download the USB drivers that are going to allow our computers to communicate with the actual chip. I'm going to connect the board to the computer over USB. And I'm going to run a quick check to verify that before installing those drivers, we cannot establish that communication. I'll open a terminal window and type in the command ls forward slash dev forward slash tty dot star. You'll see a few entries that might be different than mine, but none of them correspond to the driver that communicates with the development board. So I'm going to navigate to the page of the manufacturer of the chip. I'll leave the link in the description of the video and I'll search for my operating system, which is Mac OS X. I'm going to install the drivers. And after a few minutes, the installation completes. If I go back to that terminal window and issue the command again, I'll see that there is an additional entry that corresponds to the USB to serial adapter that's on our development board. The next step is to install the actual software that is gonna allow us to write code that is gonna be uploaded onto the chip. To do that, we're going to be using the Arduino IDE. I'll leave the link on the description of the video, but once you navigate to the page, you go to software, downloads, and then search for your operating system. In my case, Mac OS X. Once that's done, we go ahead and install it. And before opening the Arduino IDE, we need to add support to the ESP32. And that process in the future will be a little bit easier, but because it's very early on, we need to do it manually. So we need to type in a few commands that we can find in the GitHub repository of the company that manufactures the actual chip. I'll leave the link in the description of the video but you can click on the instructions for your own operating system, in my case, Mac. And we simply need to copy paste these commands onto that terminal window we opened before.
Once that process is complete, we're ready to try some things out. So I'll open up the Arduino ID. And if everything went according to plan, I should be able to go to the tools menu and go down to board and see a few entries under ESP32 Arduino. I'm going to select the one that I have, which is do it ESP32 dev kit version one. I should also see under the tools menu, the port corresponding to the USB drivers that I installed previously. Then I can open up one of the examples. The first one I'll try is a Wi-Fi scan uploaded to the board. And once it's done, I can open the serial monitor Make sure that the baud rate is 115-200 and see that the Wi-Fi capabilities are working. Now we can try out the Bluetooth side of things. If we open up the example, simple BLE, simple BLE device, uploaded to the board, Then using a smartphone and a Bluetooth scanning app. In my case, I'm going to be using an iPhone and the light blue app, which is free. Then we can see the device being listed. The simple example doesn't include any services or any characteristics, but we'll talk a little bit more about Bluetooth later. So there you have it. You have the ESP32 successfully running inside the Arduino IDE. And I said before, I was gonna give you a few tips when to use the ESP8266 versus the ESP32. And the main two that I can come up with is if you need the extra processing power, that second core and the additional processing speed makes the ESP32 more attractive. Also, if you need the Bluetooth capability, remember that Bluetooth consumes a lot less power than Wi-Fi. So that's another big reason to go for the ESP32. However, do remember that right now it's about twice as expensive as the ESP8266. And it's always gonna be a little bit more expensive. So you need to consider that also. If you like my video and wanna see more, I invite you to support the channel by using the link to my Patreon page in the description of the video. But whatever you do, remember to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. Until next time.